My name is Edwin Towler. I'm a wildlife photographer and all-round animal enthusiast. And this, this is the science of cute. This episode will focus on some of the cutest animals in the United Kingdom, starting at the nation's shore. The Norfolk coast is the final frontier between England and the North Sea. Manning this border is Britain's tubbiest infantry. Harbour seals station themselves along the coast, elegantly patrolling the beaches. Perhaps the term elegance was rather ambitious. Their chunky physique isn't due to overindulgence in an unhealthy lifestyle. It is in fact due to a thick layer of blubber, which keeps the animals warm in the frigid sea. These plump pinnipeds haul themselves onto land to rest and warm up. Understandably, they are rather exhausted. They may have spent days fishing at sea. Harbour seals have 34 to 36 teeth, ideal for catching fish and crushing crustaceans. At a glance, they seem heartbreakingly ill-equipped for their beach environment. For the sea, though, these chub marines are tailor-made. Pectoral flippers contain the same skeletal elements found in the forelimbs of land mammals. Their comical stubbiness doesn't just make them great scratching aids, but allows the flippers to conform to their bodies, significantly reducing underwater drag. Powerful webbed hind flippers propel and steer them through the water. Large, oily eyes let the seals see in cold, dark waters, and long, sensitive whiskers help them feel their surroundings when visibility is poor. At the end of summer, Female harbour seals come ashore to give birth to a single pup. These pups are fantastically independent, able to swim hours after being born, and are wonderfully curious. That's a nice, shiny rock. Or not. Maybe some local wildlife is more interesting. Well, everyone else seems to be snoozing anyway. That must be the way to go. Adopting a banana pose may look a bit absurd, but it's how these seals regulate their body temperature. More cute creatures are found further ashore. Green and pleasant lands encompassing open moorland and temperate forest accommodate the United Kingdom's largest land mammal. Red deer have been a splendid, regal presence in the British countryside for millennia. Populations of red deer maintain a certain social status quo, with younger, fresh-faced stags living in bachelor groups away from the main herd for the majority of the year. Stags begin growing antlers each spring. As they grow, the antlers are engulfed in a fuzzy layer of velvet that provides nutrients to the bone material beneath. Stags grow larger, more branched antlers, year on year. As summer departs, so does the velvet. The stags now sport clean, hard, battle-ready antlers. Heads begin to turn as they start sizing each other up. They lock antlers, rehearsing for the upcoming rut, where they will return to the hinds territory to compete for breeding rights. Although for these young stags, it all seems somewhat futile, considering the current top competition. The dominant stag, like this chap, has control over the herd of hinds, and during the rut, he will use his impressive headset to ward off rival males. These hinds are worth fighting for. If he successfully retains his reign for the upcoming year, then he will mate with each hind, who in turn will each have an adorable fawn in spring. Fawns are born with a distinctive speckled pattern, which helps camouflage them whilst they're less confident on their feet. 
Like the adults, the fawn's large eyes are placed on the side of their head, giving them a panoramic view to spot danger. They will rely on their mother's milk for three to four months and will stay by her side for up to a whole year before becoming a speckle-free, fully independent adult. Moving towards suburbia, one recognizable canid has adapted well to the changing landscape, thriving in a more urban environment. The red fox is an incredibly adaptive species. This vixen has made a den underneath an industrial building for herself and her family. This single mother has her work cut out in spring. She not only needs to support herself, but a whole litter of clumsy ginger cubs too. Often, the father would bring the mother food while she supports their offspring. But in this case, the father figure is no longer around. The cubs rely on the vixen's milk for up to two months, after which their teeth will have developed enough for purely solid food. Until then, this mother will have to put up with being a dependable refueling station. After lunch, it's playtime. The cubs eagerly explore their surroundings, being careful not to stray too far from the den, but perhaps not careful enough to stay completely out of trouble. Mother opts to sit out, indulging in some well-earned me time. This energetic play isn't pure tomfoolery. The cubs vastly benefit from learning their physical limits and skills, even if it costs a tumble or two. Hunting skills are also practiced by stalking their siblings. Pouncing on unsuspecting leaves will directly translate to preying on voles as the cubs mature. All this play can be rather draining, but the cubs still have a lot to learn. In a few months, they will become fully independent, putting all this practice into action. I'm at the Norfolk coast. This area is very famous for grey seals, um, and in winter, so November, through December, they all come ashore and have their pups. But I'm here at the end of summer, so I'm here to try and find harbour seals and their pups because they're young earlier in the year. So at the moment, I'm just walking along the sand dunes, scanning the beach behind me, trying to find some seals. <laughs> right, we're in luck. I found some seals. It's a bit of a relief because I come all the way to Norfolk, so if I didn't, it would have been a bit of a waste of the time. This whole film would have had to be. Uh, rescripted. So they're down there on that big haul out point on the beach. So I guess I need to go down and actually start getting some footage for this film. <laughs> so I'm on the beach now with the seals um, and I'm trying to get some, some nice smooth footage. Uh, but the problem, the problem is with the tripod because normally I'm used to putting it on solid ground and it all works fine. Uh, but today obviously I've got it on the beach so it's on the nice soft sand which means all the legs keep digging in. So as I'm trying to pan or get nice smooth shots of the seals, the legs are just going deeper and deeper and all the footage is going shaky and just juggling about. If I had thought this through, what I would have done is brought something like some CDs or something to put underneath each of the tripod legs and that would stop them sinking in, but I didn't. So I think what I'm going to have to do is just bury the legs as much as I can so they can't go in any further and then hope that holds the camera steady while I try and do, do some filming. So I've got pretty much all the footage I need for this short film now, I've been here all day. I managed to get some good footage as well of the Harbour Seal Pups, which is which was the main intention of coming here. Uh, there's one little bit of footage I haven't managed to get though, which is the Harbour Seals doing their banana pose. This is easiest to explain by just showing you, so I'll, I'll demonstrate it now. But it's essentially when they lift their heads and their tails up at the same time, while they're lying on their back and belly. So that's what I'm going to try and quickly get some footage of now, before the light completely goes. Well, I managed to get the banana pose footage. So that's me done here. I've got the footage I need now to make the short film. I hope you enjoyed this behind the scenes look and I hope you enjoyed the final, the final film. Uh, 
Thanks for watching.